Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today I will be talking about stop judging the women you find yourself involved with. But before I jump into the main topic, I just want to say all glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven and to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Make sure you guys hit the like button and comment down below and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. All right, so the idea for this topic came up because I received an email from a young brother. I'm not going to read the entire email, but I will read the first two sentences because it's leading into the topic that I'm discussing today. His email says, peace and blessings, Eddie. The true beginning of my journey as a Christian started yesterday. I have encountered a witch who I believe was sent from the devil to thwart the path that God has for me. So I get on the phone with the brother and he begins to tell me his story about a woman that he began to try to date. Now, this is, of course, he's living in the world at this time. He's not really living for God. But he meets a woman that he's trying to date and he feels something off in the beginning and then the closer and closer he gets to her the more he sees that she's involved with this kind of witchcraft stuff so he ends up with her at her house and he's in her room and she has all kind of witchcraft stones and witchcraft tapestries on her on her walls and he's in there with her not fully crossing the line of fornication but in there hugged up and cuddled up with her which is pretty much the same thing if you didn't know we shouldn't be hugged up and cuddled up the bible speaks about inordinate affection but that's another topic for another day but lo and behold the brother says he's in there with her but he begins to get these eerie witchcraft vibes and he says he believed god tells him to get out of there as soon as possible so he leaves the house of the, of the young lady and he, he vows that he's done he's not going to visit her again or talk to her again and then, then he gets on the phone with me uh, hours later and we began to review and discuss and talk about his situation but one of the points that i had to let the brother in on because as i began to talk to him i noticed that he had this tone this tone of like yeah that that girl is not a girl that i should ever be with she's a sinner this and i i, I, I just that kind of tone like she's a witch she's on some evil stuff that's not somebody that i should ever be with and i recognize that now and i had to tell the brother hold on brother before you judge this girl and, and, and completely push her far away to the side you have to understand and recognize the reality of the fact is that you were there. You were there with her. You were hugged up with her. You were cuddled up with her. You were already crossing lines and boundaries. And by your own admission, you were beginning to fall into some romantic love with the girl. Now, of course, I I've talked about this before. We wrestle against, we don't wrestle against a, a flesh. We wrestle against spiritual forces in high places, Ephesians 6.12. So even a lot of times the woman you find attractive may not necessarily be the kind of woman you find attractive. And this is one of the things that I was telling the brother is that he said he didn't find her attractive initially, but one thing led to another. The next thing you know, she, she began to look different. And that's what will happen sometimes when spirits are at work trying to lead you astray. Right. The, 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 the person that's not usually the kind of person you would go for. Now you're all of a sudden finding yourself attracted to them, because what people have to understand is sometimes it's not just you that's formulating what you're attracted to. Sometimes people are dealing with internal spirits in themselves, in the girl that are trying to orchestrate you two coming together for spiritual purposes to destroy you both. And so he found himself with this woman. And he didn't find her attractive, but next thing you know, her, her, her appearance changes, right? Now she looks attractive to him. And what I was trying to let the brother in on is that this spirit, the spirit of Jezebel, the spirits of lust, the spirits of rejection, the, there's, there's spirits, spirits of loneliness, there's spirits working together to make you drawn to somebody like a quote unquote, which you would call a witch, to further ensnare you into darkness and to evil, right? To open doors up in you and her both for greater destruction on both of you guys' behalves. But I also had to, had to correct the brother on something. I had to say, listen, you were there. As much as you may want to down the woman or push her far away to the side or label her as a witch, if she's a witch, brother, then by that very standard, you're, you on some level are a warlock because that's the only way you would find yourself in a situation with such a woman it's not like it's the, the moment you noticed the signs that she was into some witch stuff you said whoa that witch stuff has nothing to do with who i am i'm getting away from her as soon as possible that's not what he did he began to get closer and closer and closer to her and eventually of course he snapped out of it and got away but as close as he got was revealing that something in him was somehow linking with something in her. 
that it, it could be something that he has not yet noticed. It can be on a subatomic level, a, a metaphysical or spiritual level where the spiritual darkness working in him that's working to lead him to where she is has not completed its job yet. Because this is when I get into deliverance ministry and helping people with deliverance from demons. Some people have demons and demonic spirits in them that are working to achieve something that has not yet been complete. Right. The spirit of adultery doesn't come into a woman or a man when they actually committed adultery. It can, but it comes in to make them commit adultery. Right. So if, if, if somebody found themselves attracted to an adulterous person, they can't say, well, I don't know why I was attracted to them because they're an adulterer, but I've never committed adultery because you could very well have the spirit in you driving you to do the same things that they're doing. So this young brother could have spirits. He could have had spirits of witchcraft, right? Spirits of these things that were working in him to drive him to where that woman was in her spiritual walk, walk of black magic and evil. Those spirits had just not completed their job yet. And that's one of the dangerous things about demonic, about demonic spirits in the realm that is unseen is that sometimes what's behind the scenes can be working to achieve something that you don't know that, that, they, are, that they haven't achieved yet and so you don't know that they're there. I remember Derek Prince was teaching about how the spirit of murder comes in to make somebody commit murder. It doesn't come in and it'll lay dormant waiting for its opportunity to strike to make that person commit murder. Where that person just snapped and said, I don't know what came over me. They just blacked out and did something and they don't even realize what happened. Right. And so it just made me remember to just tell brothers out there, of course, you guys know I'm adamantly as the Bible is, as the scripture is, as the word of God is, I am adamantly against fornication, right? Fornication is you laying down with any woman that is not your legally married wife. And don't let anyone deceive you to make you think that you don't have to get legally married. I was just reading the book of Luke in the Bible when you'll see that Mary and Joseph went and got legally registered as husband and wife while Mary was pregnant with Jesus Christ. Right. Don't let anyone deceive you to tell you that you don't have to submit to the government authority. Somebody told me recently, they said, why, why should we have to let the government get involved in our marriage? The, 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 marriage, the, the government didn't invent marriage. God invented marriage. So we shouldn't let the government regulate something God invented and they didn't invent. I said, well, the government didn't invent me and you neither. Right. The government didn't create human beings. So maybe they just shouldn't exist at all. Right. The government didn't create the land that your house is on, but you still pay them property taxes. Right. The government doesn't go work your nine to five, doesn't go make your income. Right. They didn't create your job or your business, but they st you still pay them taxes. So don't because because it it potentially can produce a complication. You trying to leave them out of the whole marriage thing. Right. And, and I don't understand that for women, honestly. Uh, especially a woman that's a stay-at-home wife. Why would she ever not want to be legally married? But that's, that's a whole other conversation for another day. But the, the theme of the video of the day, guys, is the woman that you find yourself with, even if you look at the woman you found yourself with in the past, if you've left that life behind, but if you looked at people that you found yourself with, at that time of your life, there was something in that woman or something in you that caused you two to be together, which means a part of who she is is who you are. And, and maybe you haven't arrived there yet, but that's where you're headed. And so I was telling the brother, don't be so quick to put this woman down and completely write her off and make her seem like she's some bad person when you are right there in the same house, in the same couch, in the same room, hugged and snuggled up with her. There's something in her that's you. Because that's why you were drawn to her in the first place. There was something that brought you two together. Right. So I, I had to tell him that he and he received that by the grace of God. He received that and he, he recognized that he was he was elevating himself. Because the bottom line is a woman likes a guy that is more than what she is. So in every situation, if you choose to be high minded, you can put a woman down because the very reason why the woman was attracted to you is because she was attracted to somebody that could lead her, somebody that could be her head, somebody that was more than her. Right. She wanted somebody that was taller than her, someone that was older than her somebody that was smarter than her, somebody that was more successful than her. I'm talking in the terms of the world. I'm not speaking about how we are supposed to be operating as Christians and believers in Jesus Christ. But the point is, you're always going to be more to some degree than any woman who's attracted to you because that's what drew her to you in the first place. But don't in you, don't take that then 
and, and think that you can somehow distance yourself from who she is when you found yourself hugged up with her. The Bible says two shall become one flesh. And some people do that through the illegal act of fornication, which is going to blacken and destroy their souls. But they're still joining themselves together. As the Bible says in Corinthians, don't you know when a guy lays with a prostitute, him and her become one flesh. Now, him and that prostitute aren't married, right? They're committing an act of fornication, right? But they're still being joined together. And so I, I, I tell guys that, you know, in deliverance ministry, in my experience, from how I understand this and believe Fornication is probably the easiest way that somebody, that it's one of the only things somebody can do one time and open themselves up to a demonic spirit. It's the only thing you can just do one, and it, 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 I'm talking about like on an average basis. Yes, people can do something one time and, and something could happen, but typically, right? Typically, the act of fornication completely opens up a wide doorway to the demonic. I, I, was, I, I was talking to a brother, he, he was telling me how he used to have a drinking problem a long time ago. And then he kicked the drinking problem for years. And then out of nowhere, suddenly, the, years later, the drinking problem resurfaced worse than it had ever been before. And he was trying to figure out how it happened. And through our conversation, we were able to trace back a woman that he had dealt with in sin in the world who also had a drinking problem. And although he didn't drink with her, although it seemed to just not to, to be a short-term thing, what she had was able to cross over into what into into who he was because he was joining herself with him and that can happen on both ends right it, it, it happens largely i believe on the woman's end because they are the weaker vessel but it can happen on the, that 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 crossover can happen on both ends right and so the, the, and the, the, the dangerous thing about it is by the time it takes over, by the time the drinking problem really resurfaces, if you're living a lifestyle of the playboy, red pill, manosphere kind of lifestyle, it, by the time it resurfaces, the girl whom we resurface through will be long gone, right? A, it takes time for demons to change and manipulate the mind to get you to, to be found back in sins and, 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 and living a lifestyle, right? The devil's not going to deceive you in one day. It's not like, oh, you, a guy messed with a woman that had a drinking problem and the next day he woke up with a drinking problem. No, it's not like that. It may take six months to a year for the demonic spirits that cross over to effectively accomplish their mission to get you to develop the drinking problem. So you may not even be able to pinpoint where it came from if you're living that kind of lifestyle. And, and, and so I, I, I just, this is just a message, guys, of just, just talking to brothers out there. I don't know how you guys are living your life. You know, I don't, I don't really do dating talk anymore, of course, because that lifestyle is completely in opposition to who I am today and to where God has called me. But I still talk to brothers from time to time that are dealing with these relationships and find themselves in these central relationships and are dealing with the consequences thereof. For the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And so the wages of fornication is death. Not only does it lead to to issues and broken hearts and sadness and, and STDs and all kind of things that can kill people, but it leads to a spiritual death and separation from God. And, and so one of the other things that was happening with the brother when I was talking to him is he said, yeah, you know, he, he, he prays, he, he has a relationship with God, but I, I had to tell him that, you know, when I was living, I thought I had a relationship with God too when I was living that lifestyle. I would pray every night. I was successful. I had money. I, and I thought God was blessing me with all the money that I had, even though my, my entire life was in opposition to the way, he, the way he caused me to live. But I had to realize that I had a relationship with my own pride. I had no relationship with God because as long as I was in constant, perpetual and consistent sin, I was separated from God by my sin because God is holy. And I had not fully received Jesus Christ that my sins would be washed in his blood and that, that I would be made clean and righteous that I may come and appear before God. We can't come to God in and of ourselves. Some people think that they have a relationship with or know God and they know themselves and their own pride and the spirits that is around them, keeping them feeling confident about a relationship with God that does not exist. I lived in that space for many years. But it wasn't until I ceased from my sin by the grace of God and by the power that came when I, when I believed in Jesus Christ that I was able to cease from my sin that I could actually recognize that what I thought was a relationship with God was not because now I actually have what, that was, what I thought I had in the past. And so one of the things about is that we, we, we are covered in filth. I give people the analogy all the time that 
that if, if let's say your mom asked you for a hug, you would probably hug her. But if you were covered in feces or your mom was covered in feces and she asked you for a hug, no matter how much you loved her, you wouldn't hug her because the filth of the feces would be separating you from your mother. It wouldn't change your love for her, but it would. But until she got clean, it would cause a separation between you two where you were, she's kind of like, oh, you kind of like, oh, you know. And in that same way, our sin is disgusting. It's filthy to God. And when we are living lives of sin, covered in sin with the smut of sin over our lives, that sin separates us from God. That sin keeps us from God. That sin is repulsive. And that's why Jesus Christ came to take our sin that when we believe in him spiritually, our defilement is removed for he took our sin that we might inherit his righteousness. And when he gave his life on the cross for the sins of the world and was resurrected from the dead. And that we, so we cannot come to God in and of ourselves, in and of our own righteousness. I give people one more analogy where I tell people, if I, if I, let's say I knocked on your mother's house right now, just me as me. And I said, hello, ma'am, I'm Eddie. Can I come in? She would probably say No. I don't know you, sir, but what if, I, what if I knew you, her son? Let's say your name was Jeff, and I said, hey, how you doing? I'm here in the name of your son, Jeff. I'm here on behalf of your son, Jeff. Can I come in? She would probably let me in because I know her son, and she would want to hear what I have to say on behalf of her son. And, and now that I'm in the house, I can build a relationship with her. But until I knew her son, I could not come into the house because I did not know her. What qualified me to come into your mother's house when I don't know her? What, 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 what allowed me entry was the fact that I knew her son. And so we're on the outside of the house of God. But when we come to God in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, the door opens. You're saying, hello, God, I'm here in the name of your son, Jesus. I'm here on behalf of your son, Jesus. Can I come in? And that's when the door opens, come on in. And that's when you're able to build a relationship for Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to God unless they come through him. If you think you have a relationship with God and you don't believe in Jesus Christ of the Bible, and I'm talking to the people too who think they have to say these sacred Hebrew names as well. If you're not coming to God in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, you have no relationship with God. It is a figment of your own imagination. And I, I don't want to say, your imagination it is a figment of deception that many are that many are surrounded in because they have not accepted Jesus Christ and been cleansed of their defilement that they may appear before God's throne of grace through his son Jesus Christ and that's essentially in a nutshell the gospel that Jesus Christ came to take our defilement our filth our sin that we might be reconciled unto God through him and he was resurrected from the dead sitting at the right hand of God where he waits his enemies to be made a footstool for his feet and so that's the message of the day, guys. Recognize that any woman that you found yourself with in the past was reflecting something about you. You know, and, and it's, it's not like anybody that you found yourself constantly dealing with and going back, that they, it was something in them that was in you. It could be small, it could be big, but you can't write off, you're writing off who you are. You're rejecting them, but in turn, you're rejecting an aspect of yourself that you're not ready to deal with. Because what's in them is in you and that's why you two came together on some level it's the same way a lot of guys complain about the state of women today while at the same time ignoring the state of men the state of woman is also reflecting to you the state of men women are the weaker vessels so there you may see it in them first but men are, as well have fallen from the from what men used to be as well and so what you're seeing in women is also the falling of men and women being reflected in the women. Men are no longer the men that men used to be. Women are no longer the women that women used to be. So we're, everybody's scrambling to try to figure it out. The damage of sin is just being reflected in both. And so if we don't have God, none of us stand any chance. You could be the most alpha male, most handsome, best man in the world. But if you don't have God, it won't be enough. None of us are enough. God has an order, a biblical design for men and women that is perfect, that represents Jesus Christ in the church. That is perfect. But if you don't have God, it won't work. There's a passage in the Bible that says, if you hire people to watch your house and they don't know God, or you don't know God, they watch your house in vain. If people build a house for you, they build your house in vain if they don't know God, because they can make a mistake. They can have a mishap. They can fall asleep. And if you think that you not getting legally married or you doing things your own way is somehow going to allow you to preserve your relationship or marriage, if you don't have God, it's not going to go your way. You're rolling the dice, guys. You're rolling the dice. And, 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 and it's, it's sin. 
right? It's sin that separates us from God, but you're rolling the dice. But when we trust in God, we, we trust in one who is perfect that can make all things work together for our good. So I just want to put that message out there, guys. If there's any topics that you guys would like me to touch on, if you have an aspect of even topics like this that you would like to hear more about, like I, I, I want to know what would you like to hear about? What would you like to hear me talk more about so that I can do more videos that are around the topics that you guys might want to hear about? So that's the video today, guys. All glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven and to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Make sure you hit the bell notification icon and, and make sure it's toggled the all setting. Make sure it's not on personalized when you hit the bell notification icon. Anybody that wants to give or donate to the channel, I'm going to put something on the screen right here, right now. You can use any one of these links uh, if you want to give or give anything to the channel. Uh, God bless you guys in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be well, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in.